Question number 55. We have an electron in orbit at a constant radius around a proton. Say hello to the hydrogen atom. More specifically, the Rutherford Bohr classical model of the hydrogen atom. And we assume that the proton is stationary and that only electrostatic forces act on the two-particle system. We're trying to figure out the kinetic energy of the two-particle system. Well, the proton is considered to be at rest, so it has no kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the electron is the only kinetic energy we're going to need to count. And that's one half the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron squared. So we just need the velocity of the electron. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the electron. And then we're going to sum the forces in the end direction. In our free body diagram, we have an electric force. The only force acting on the electron is that electric force toward the proton. There's actually an equal but opposite Newton's third law pair uh, electric force acting on the proton as well toward the electron, but we're only summing the forces on the electron, so we're only worried about this electric force. That electric force is in, and therefore it is positive when we sum the forces in the in direction. We sum the forces in the in direction because the electron is moving in a circle. And the net force is always equal to mass times the acceleration. So this is going to be the acceleration in the in direction, which is the centripetal acceleration. And this mass will be the mass of the electron. Substituting in the equation for the electric force or Coulomb's force, we have Coulomb's constants times charge 1 times charge 2 divided by r squared, where r is the distance between the center of charges of the two charges. That's equal to the mass of the electron times the centripetal acceleration, which is the tangential velocity squared, divided by the radius of the circle. Now we can substitute in our variables. And we get the Coulomb's constant times now the charge for both the electron and the proton have a magnitude of the fundamental charge, E, divided by R. Now, this is the radius of the circle in this particular case because the distance between the center of charges is the radius of the circle, so we get capital R squared. That's equal to the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron. The tangential velocity is the velocity of the electron. That's squared divided by the radius of the circle, which is capital R. And we can cancel out one of the capital R's from both sides, and we can get... Now we have Coulomb's constant times the fundamental charge squared divided by the radius of the circle. That's equal to the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron squared. Now our goal was to get to the kinetic energy, so we just need to multiply this whole thing by one half to get one half mass times velocity squared to get to the kinetic energy. So you can see the kinetic energy ends up being one half times the mass of the electron times the velocity of the electron squared, or Coulomb's constant times the fundamental charge squared divided by two times the radius. Now, sadly, that doesn't really match any of our answers. So you need to remember that Coulomb's constant is equal to one over four pi E naught. Substituting in for the Coulomb constant, 1 over 4 pi e naught, you get that the kinetic energy is equal to the fundamental charge squared divided by the quantity 8 pi e naught times the radius. The correct answer is B. Mr. P? Uh, yes, Bob? An electron has a negative charge, so shouldn't you plug in negative E for the electron and get the negative of your answer, which would be choice C? It's a good question, Bobby, and a pretty common mistake for students to make. So it comes back to our free body diagram. We drew our free body diagram with the electric force going from pulling the negative electron toward the positive proton. The reason for that was because of the law of charges, right? A negative and a positive are going to attract one another, unlike charges attract. And then we summed our forces, and we summed forces in the indirection, and we got that the electric force was positive because the electric force was inward, which is positive. Which means, once we've drawn our free body diagram and we've summed our forces, we have used that negative on the electron. And we're not going to use it again because that would just switch the direction of the force, which we can't do. So we've already figured out the direction of the force that used the negative, and we just use the magnitude of the charge throughout the rest of the problem. Thank you much for the question. It was a good one.